Good evening, everybody. Um, obviously, from today's title, you can see that this week's video is all about photographing and filming barn owls. And uh, I know a lot of the time we like to give the impression that we research a site, turn up to it, take some video, take some pictures, put a vlog together and put it out to you. Well, actually, this must be my... Ooh, 10th visit to this site um, in the last few weeks, even pulling double sessions where I've done a five o'clock in the morning till half past seven and then after work come back at sort of say six o'clock until nine o'clock. Um, it's been really, really challenging. And as you can hopefully see from those clips that I'm just putting up now, um, yeah, it's been really hard to work out the sort of pattern of the owls. I've, I've tried everything from when we've had some rain at night coming the following morning early, hoping that, you know, sort of experience tells me and the knowledge of other people tells me that if you have rain at night, the owls can't hunt, obviously, so they'll hunt earlier in the morning as soon as it stops. So, yeah, it's been a case of trying all that. And yeah, it's going to take me probably 10 sessions to get this video finished. So hopefully tonight I should be able to do that. Um, fingers crossed anyway. So I'm going to go up to the site now and get set up for probably my last four hours. Uh, I've enjoyed it so much so that I can't see me not coming back. But for the sake of this video, as you'll see uh, from some of the images, some are obviously shot on dull days while others we've got bright sun. It's a bit of a... A mixture today uh, we've got some cloud around so I'm not quite sure what we're going to get and I'll explain a little bit about the site when I get up there and why I've chosen this and obviously yeah we'll hopefully get some footage and uh, have some footage to show to you but only time will tell. Right, so I'm, I'm up at the site now, so I thought I'd better explain a little bit about the site and, and why I've set up where I have, and actually why I'm going to look to changing my position tonight. Yes, on the last night, I'm going to have a change of position, I think. I just have to check it out to see whether it's possible. But what you've got behind me, this is an old um, cricket field, a village cricket field. And... They obviously don't use it anymore, so they've let it go to sort of meadow. They cut it a couple of times a year. The actual owls are nesting over that hedge there in the next field, which has got crops in it. There's an old barn, and they also put an owl box up there for them. But because this is the largest area of sort of pasture land or, or um, scrub land, if you like, that it's not got a crop in it, this is obviously the best place for things like voles and mice. So my thinking was, it's a big area, they're gonna come and hunt over here. Now, obviously what farmers do a lot in this area as well is they leave nice wide verges. So what I've found over the 10 visits I've come here is that they don't actually stop in here very long. Um, they'll tend to fly through here, do one quick pass and then over the hedge here and then presumably they're going down the uh, hedge lines and, and uh, hunting down there as well. So that's what's made it quite difficult. I, I really would have preferred it if this was probably about four times as big as it is. And I think it would have held them there for a little bit longer, which would have made it easier for me. So yeah, it's sort of fleeting and uh, yeah, can make it quite difficult. So the plan tonight is what I've been doing in the past. And if I can just swing round, I was over in that corner there. Uh, that's where I've been set up sort of every day in that corner because it's slightly higher. It means I'm looking slightly down into the field, which means that when I'm taking images, what I don't want to be, A, I can see the owls coming, whichever direction they're coming from, because sometimes they're coming from this side, sometimes they're coming from this side over here. It's always difficult to tell. So I can see where they're coming in from and get set up. But the other reason is if I'm shooting down, it means I'm more than likely when the quarter in the field I'm going to get a shot of the owl and a green nice green background rather than if I'm low down potentially I'm going to get a nice bright sky in which is I don't I always think looks 
not as good, you know, because it's such a high contrast. So I try and avoid that um, if I can. So that's where I've been set up every day. The plan today is to move over to here, just behind where the camera is here. And the reason for that is what I've noticed while I've been coming up here, the owls either, the owls either come up this side here and then they'll scoot across this banking here and sort of hunt to in more in the ditch and on the side of the banking or they'll come the other way and then they'll come this way and then they'll shoot straight over this hedge here now what i'm hoping to do today because i need some footage is to set up at side of where they shoot over the hedge because uh, it's quite high there as well so hopefully set up in the the hawthorn trees um, pretty much as i was over there the hawthorn bushes and then hopefully i can get some film of them coming towards me down this gully um, that's the plan anyway i'm just going to have a look at it and see if that's possible if it's not i'll go back to where i was before the only other issue i have got is that i did put a post up for them over there and obviously i'm not going to be able to get any shots of them sat on the post it's miles too far away over in that corner unless i move the post which i'm thinking of having a go at doing if i can uh, potentially I can because there's some nice big blocks here from where the um, little cricket pavilion used to sit so I might be able to prop it up with some of them that's all I've done over there is just prop it up so we'll see anyway but yeah that's the layout of the site hopefully you can see from that the issues that I've had um, so I'm going to get set up because what I've learned over the last 10 sessions I've been doing this is that the pattern is very erratic. Sometimes they'll come in this field and they'll do three hunts over it, go back with a vole, come back, hunt this field again, go back with another vole. And then other times they'll come, do one quick hunt over here, disappear, and then they're not back here for three hours. And I've had a lot of sitting just watching nothing for three hours. So you never really know what's going to happen. You can't really tell on time. I've been up here at four o'clock in the afternoon and they've been hunting in this field in bright sunshine. Um, yeah, and then other times they're not here till it gets dark, so it has been quite a challenge, hence the number of times I've been up here trying to get this completed, but really I've enjoyed it and it's, yeah, it's got me thinking a little bit, but we'll see what we can do. I'm going to get set up and then I'll come back to you later. Right, so there, there has been a little change of plan. Um, my intention today was to try and set up somewhere else, as I explained, uh, for the very reason that I thought I could get a nice shot of the barn owl coming along that uh, banking side. The, the problem is, is where I wanted to set up. I didn't want it to be too close to the gap in the hedge where the barn owl's going through. I wanted to be a little bit off it. And unfortunately, to set up there means that um, I'm going to be slightly lower down so i'd only see the barn owl for probably two or three seconds um, because if it's hunting low down which it generally does in this little bit of a ditch um, i just wouldn't see it to get any get any uh, film or images so that might be a, something i try another time perhaps when this has been cut um, as i say they do cut it a couple of times a year it's really really high at the minute so it means i've not got much opportunity to get that shot so what i've done is i've come back to where i've been setting up for the last 10 sessions. Uh, I've left my post in the ground there, so hopefully, you never know, I might get one land on there. I have to say, um, I've also used scrim netting rather than a hide. Now, the reason I do that is because I'm not sure, I know where the owl's nest is, I know where the young are gonna be, but they have several ways of exiting and entering this field, and if I'm in a hide, I've got a very narrow field of view. So I could be, I could have an owl hunting in a part of the field down the side of me and I wouldn't see it, I wouldn't know it was there. So what I tend to do is use scrim netting 
and sort of get behind that as much as I can. Now at the minute I've got bare arms, I'm in a t-shirt because it's still quite warm, it's still quite early, it's only nearly six o'clock. So in a minute what I'm going to do is put my coat on, I've also got some gloves that cover my hands and really my head and my face is behind, generally behind the camera. So there's not a lot of me on view and I have to say the times that I've got my best shots that I'll put up at the end of this video has been when I've sort of said oh that's it for the night, packed up and I've been walking through the field and the owl's just flown straight past me as if I'm not there. Uh, they don't seem to be particularly bothered so I know that you know this is not um, it's not overkill it's just enough I think to, to cover me up so that they're not seeing that there's a you know they're not recognizing a person there as I say although I don't think they'd, they'd be particularly bothered from what what I've seen in the past I've just been really unlucky with um, trying to guess when they're going to be flying around I think that's been the problem anyway it's just before six I'm going to get this scrim all the way around me. What I tend to do is back myself into this hawthorn hedge. It's like some sort of weird masochistic acupuncture in your back. Um, it's particularly bad at the minute with a t-shirt on. It's not so bad with the coat on, but um, yeah, it's probably any back problems I had, I've probably relieved them all by sort of some weird type of acupuncture, but hopefully I'm going to get some film tonight. That's what I'm going to concentrate on anyway, and uh, we'll see what happens. So I'll give, I'll, uh, disappear for a while while I make sure that everything's set up as best as I can and uh, I'll catch up with you a little bit later. This is my only position now for the next three hours. Um, so yeah, I'm into concentration mode now because they can appear anyway so I'm going to set my settings up as I want them. Generally if I'm doing sort of shots of barn owls what I tend to do is what I do with most wildlife is I'll have the camera set to auto ISO and then for barn owls I will go down to about 500th of a second um, shutter speed but if I can I like to uh, get closer to sort of 1 800th of a second or a thousand of a second if, if the you know the light's good enough um, and then yes as, as regards aperture f6.3 on this lens or I might go to f7.1 and that's it for filming it's a little different I try in different things at the minute because I'm sometimes finding I, I used to like to use the central section and have all the um, the focus points firing off so that obviously if you're tracking a bird in flight then you know you've you've got a good chance of hitting it but because this is an owl and it's flying so low over the vegetation what i'm finding is sometimes the autofocus can hit on some of this um, vegetation instead so if there's some higher vegetation in front it'll suddenly flick from the owl and and onto that vegetation and then back again so i'm going to try sort of a flexible central spot um, extended so just a, lot, a much smaller area um, because the owl's not a fast flying bird it's gonna you know a lot of the time here it's going to be flying towards me then I'm hoping that that might work a little bit better but we'll see by the footage anyway or lack of it so yeah that's basically my setup for tonight and obviously if I get some footage the problem with it is, is it's always tempting because I'm a photographer if I get really lovely light quite early on it's really tempting to shoot some images um, before film because the thing with film is even if I'm shooting if I want to shoot some slow motion um, I'm only at 250th of a second so I don't particularly need the light so it makes sense really to shoot that last thing I mean if I shoot in normal speed I only need 1 60th of a second so yeah it tugs at my it tugs at me a little little bit because part of me really wants to take some more images but I need to get some footage so I'm going to try footage first because the problem with it is as I said it's so erratic I might get one fly through here if I'm lucky I might get one if I might not get any as I say they're so so damn erratic up here that they may just decide they're going to hunt the other way down the road verges or something so if I 
go for taking shots, there's a good chance or a chance that they won't come back again in the three hours I'm here. So yeah, I'm going to have to go for the footage, I think, first and see what happens. But let's just hope they turn up at all. Ow, ow. I just thought I'd report quickly back to you. After that first fly past, I thought, judging on past performance, that might be it for the night. The sun sunk behind some really dark cloud. I don't know whether you can see, there's some clouds up here. There's some really black ones around as well. Um, and I thought that was gonna be it. All of a sudden, the sun breaks through for, I mean, it's a little bit hazy now. It's not as bad, there's a little bit of light. Um, but it was sort of blazing through really golden light and the flipping owl appeared, didn't it? And I'm not kidding, it did three flies through, one very, very close to me. And uh, the only thing it didn't do was land on my post, but I've just had a quick look on the back of the camera and oh yeah, it's a beautiful image. Uh, probably one of the best uh, barn owl images I've ever taken. So I really do like it with the light. As always with wildlife photography, the, often it's the light that makes the images. It you know it does with landscape photography as well. So really, really chuffed. I'm going to stay here now till nine. It's about eight o'clock, just in case this owl comes through again. It's gone very, very quiet, and I say I'm losing the light a bit. Um, but yeah, we'll 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 crack on for another hour. See if I get anything else, and uh, I'll come back to you if I do. Right as the sun sinks down behind the horizon. I've got probably about 10 minutes left, so I thought I'd record this before it gets too dark. Um, I'm gonna make my way back now, get packed up, go and get something to eat. It's been really fantastic tonight, and it's, you know, all the days I've put in where I've come away with nothing, and or very little, or shot in poor light. Tonight was that one night where, for 10 minutes, I had beautiful, beautiful light across this field and lo and behold, the owl started to come out and hunt at the same time, which to get the two things happening together, that's the first time it's happened in all these 10 sessions and really does make it all worthwhile. Um, yeah, wildlife photography is, is hard, it's not easy. And if you enjoy it, then, you know, these, times where everything does come together all the times where it doesn't it just makes it all worth worthwhile really and uh, yeah anybody who's thinking of doing some wildlife photography if you really enjoy being outdoors um, yeah it's really not a hardship really I mean it's beautiful just stood up here in this wonderful countryside to be honest um, and I have remind myself of that when I go back with with nothing on those occasions but today everything just came together and uh, I've got a shot I'm really, really happy with. I would say it's, it's, it's my best barn owl image I've ever taken. So, um, well, I'll let you judge that at the end of the video. I've got a real nice series as it flew across, across quite close in front of me. The only thing it didn't do was land on that um, post that I've put there, but maybe that's for another day. You can't have everything all at once. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, I'll see you next time for another one. As always, if you have enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really does help. 
and uh, obviously if you've not subscribed to the channel it'd be great if you could subscribe to the channel as well i'll see you soon for another video cheers bye